Scotland's highest civil court has ruled that Johnson's suspension of Parliament as the clock ticks down to deadline day was illegal. And there's more. Mr Johnson's government has been forced to publish a document detailing just how bad things might get if the UK crashes out of the EU without a deal on October the 31st, something Johnson's detractors say he's aiming for. Downing Street was trying to keep that document a secret, but Parliament voted on Monday to release it. Here's CNN's Nick Robertson with more. Early in the day, the decision by three senior Scottish judges essentially saying that Boris Johnson's proroguing of Parliament was unlawful, that he had, in effect, lied to the Queen about his reason for doing it. That will go to the Supreme Court in London Tuesday next week. In the meantime, the, the document Operation Yellowhammer, which was the government's document for its preparation of a no-deal Brexit, the government had been ordered to release that. They did that shortly before the deadline. It makes difficult and troubling reading, particularly about food and medicine supplies coming into the UK. It points to the border crossing, the channel crossing between England and France in the southeast of England as being a choke point, saying that trucks are not ready for the customs inspections that they will have on the other side, that this means there will be delays for trucks crossing over into France, back from France as well, that could last a day and a half to two and a half days. That's how long it could take to cross the border. That three quarters of Britain's medical supplies come in across that border, across the channel, and that some of those medicines are perishable, that the government cannot stockpile all the necessary medicines and that therefore there will be shortages of medicines um, if there is a no-deal Brexit. They also say that there'll be a shortage of some perishable food goods. They say that that will drive up, potentially drive up the price of foods, that this could affect the elderly, particularly that this will come into effect prior to Christmas, a time where, where food products generally, uh, th there's more food products be being bought and sold. Also saying that, um, and this is perhaps a plus for the government here, that the electricity and gas supplies for people in their houses will not be affected, uh, that they will continue to be available. However, they go on to say that over time, the price of electricity will likely rise, that this could have economic and political consequences that will play negatively, if you will, for the country that could affect businesses. That's one of the, that's one of the conclusions. So a lot to digest uh, for the public in that report. Also, the government had been expected and had been called uh, in Parliament to produce the documentation that had gone into their decision making to prorogue Parliament. Government has not done that before the deadline. They say they won't be doing that because that's not normal precedence. They say the opposition likely is going to criticise uh, the government again having got now in the public domain all these details in Operation Yellowhammer. Um, of course, the government not in session, so the opposition cannot question the government and the Prime Minister about precisely what they're doing. Now some of the more precise details are known. Nick Robertson, CNN, London. And I want to turn now to our European affairs commentator, Dominic Thomas, who joins us from Los Angeles. Dominic, I've been reading this Operation Yellowhammer some of the things that might happen, we're told, fresh food and medicine shortages, panic buying, food, fuel and electricity price rises, a rise in public disorder, even clashes between British and foreign fishing boats. And it, here's a quote, low income groups will be disproportionately affected. You can see why Boris Johnson wanted to keep this a secret. Yeah, absolutely. And the more uh, this kind of information is coming out, the more the general public gets to see that there's a disconnect between the public face of the Boris Johnson cabinet and administration in terms of the ways in which they've been speaking about their intentions of striking a deal, uh, of trying to improve on Theresa May's deal with the European Union. But in fact, the reality is that that is not at all their objective, that the private goal of this cabinet that surrounds Boris Johnson, made up of these Brexiteers that have been such detractors in this process and throughout, are in fact completely unprepared for even the consequences of no deal and one could even argue that they don't really care about those particular consequences because they're so hell-bent on simply delivering Brexit by October 31st, this crucial deadline they set themselves um, and which they hope to achieve in order to, to be um, uh, electable. So all of this information, along with all the legal battles and ramifications, uh, I think are increasing the sort of the public's mistrust of this administration. 
And Dominic, I want to move on to this uh, ruling out of Scotland today. Right. I mean, you know, Dominic Grieve, who is a former Tory minister, is saying that if the UK Supreme Court upholds that ruling um, and rules that indeed Boris Johnson illegally suspended Parliament, he of course claimed he was suspending it so that he and his party could work on their agenda. Everybody, I think, suspects it was because of Brexit. I mean, listen, he lied to the entire British electorate during the referendum campaign. Now, people are saying, because he lied to one old lady, the Queen, he might have to resign. Um, is it going to come to that? Is there a danger that Johnson is going to be turfed out? Well, I think all of these are in the realm of possibility. And not only is the Scottish verdict so interesting, but they actually, you know, reversed their decision and in so doing further underscored the fact that the deliberate aim of proroguing was to prevent Parliament from debating these issues, from trying to sort of maximise the opportunities uh, of achieving a no deal. There's a discrepancy now between the earlier London ruling and they're going to defer to the Supreme Court uh, on Tuesday. I think no matter what the outcome of that particular verdict is, and of course there are all these legal ramifications for Boris Johnson uh, himself, let alone, uh, and you see in that image there, um, uh, Rhys Mogg um, sitting behind him, is whether the Privy Council lied or misled the Queen in terms of their intentions. These are all serious, but in many ways the show has moved on because the very question of prorogation led the opposition to be increasingly mobilised and they were able, the reality is, to pass legislation uh, to block a no deal uh, while at the same time preventing a general election and you could argue the consequence of all of this was to take control over Parliament. And so this was a gross miscalculation by Boris Johnson while at the same time highlighting the fact that he has been less than honest with the general public and with the monarch, let alone the MPs, uh, with whom, in many ways, uh, his future lies in Parliament, who at any moment could pass a vote of no confidence and, uh, and essentially remove him. I mean, Dominic, I, I hate to do this to you, but what's going to happen? Well, I think that what's happening now, no matter what the legal outcome is, We've got these um, party conferences coming up over the next two weeks, and I think it's going to be absolutely crucial to see, on the one hand, what comes out of the Liberal Democrat and the Labour um, uh, party uh, conferences and the extent to which they are able to explore some kind of alliance without which their electoral hopes are very limited while at the same time the Conservative Party, that in some ways over the past two weeks or so has become completely fractured over all of these questions we've been talking about, is the extent to which they are able to move towards the Brexit Party, which improves or enhances their electoral possibilities, without alienating so many members of the Conservative Party that do not want to see the party go towards Nigel Farage. So I think that these think questions are very important. And the shadow over all of this, of course, is whether some kind of agreement with the Lib Dems, uh, the Labour Party, the whole opposition, is to not favour a general election, but in fact to push for some kind of referendum, either a complete overhaul of the Brexit argument or simply a referendum on a no deal, which would bring the British people back into the conversation. So I think that those are important ways and paths forward in this particular process.